In today's video, what we're going to talk about is the second rotational axis, and this is very difficult. Remember, one of the things we like to talk about with the throwing chain reaction, it's simply an evolution of how we teach the throws. What tends to happen in throwing is that things are handed down generation after generation. There's some great stuff about that. There's some great things that still work. So one of the things that we know is science is better today than it's ever been. The data is better than it's ever been. So one of the things we do understand is we have more biomechanical data on the throws. Now, when we're trying to teach bunch of young throwers, we're not necessarily focused on a ton of biomechanical data, but what we want to do is understand the key points. And one of the things that we want to understand is that how we pivot, and that's our second rotational axis. Again, we talked about it in the other video where we're talking about at the entry. Now what we're talking about is our pillar four, five, six, and that's where the axis is here. So a lot of times people teach this to pivot. Now you're going to notice when I pivot, you're gonna see my hips not moving. So pivoting is moving this way. And so what we wanna do is always be pushing the knee and the hip out and around. And you're gonna notice that as I turn, my hips are here. You're gonna notice if I'm from this camera that my chest is up, I'm turning this way. And so you're gonna see this motion and we're gonna continue. You're gonna notice that whole time I have ground contact. One of the big mistakes we see is athletes pivoting and pushing. So you see a pivot and push, and you're gonna see how that pushes me forward. Sometimes you're gonna see at a athletes late blocking. We'll talk about that in a different video on how to set the block. But what you wanna understand is that the axis again is vertical so that it's here. The axis goes on a slight angle, it comes around, this comes up and it pushes and it turns, and then this is what leads to the reverse. Being able to turn the delivery side all the way around into the finish is what you're gonna do. So in the shot, it's a little different. We're a little more loaded because the shot, you have to have more leg lift, right? It's a freaking heavy ball, doesn't fly. You have to punch it off. So in order to get your hips ahead, there's gonna be more leg lift. Now that, in our opinion, is not jumping at the finish because as soon as everything goes completely vertical, you're going to stop rotation. So it's about a turning and lifting. We call it a corkscrew lift. We wanna come up, punch, and I think one of the best examples of that is looking at uh, Ryan Krauser. He stays really connected to the ground. Tom Walsh, Darlin Romani, world champion Joe Kovacs. He elevates, but you're gonna notice on his 75 foot PR, he comes up and he doesn't blast way up in the air. He's blasting up and through here. And again, Joe has a slightly different style, super fast. I'm gonna do puddle two. So watch what I'm gonna have him do. Okay, not bad. So what's he gotta do? Watch, I'm gonna have him put his foot over here because he had his foot here. So a little change like this and he's gonna do this. Boom. So sweep leg out wide. There we go. See how that was a little different? Now we created more rotation. All right, good job. Okay, Cassidy, let's go. For my left-handed throwers, she's not understanding this movement, so she's gonna make a couple of mistakes right now, setting her up for tons of success right now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So she's a lefty. So here's the big mistake. Okay, ready, do that again. Watch, she's gotta jump a puddle, not think throwing. We're just gonna jump the puddle with the rotation. So how do you jump a puddle? Go ahead, jump. She's jumping like this. She's jumping off and she's leaving her chest back. See how her shoulders are staying back? So she's gotta bring her shoulder this way and land with her shoulders on top of the knee. Try that again, watch. This is a big common mistake. See how she's looking and her shoulders don't turn? Her shoulders have to turn with that movement. Okay. Does that make more sense? Now, here's what I'm gonna show you. This is what we're gonna do for pillar three. We do the jump to teach you that you have to work off this leg, okay? We're gonna do this now, sprint counter. Okay, so feel this. Put your band on, long, feel your sweep leg counter. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go, this is called a sprint counter, this is called a sweep step. Sweep step is wide. Here's what a lot of you guys will do. If I'm going this way, okay, a lot of you guys will do this. Instead of seeing the sweep go out and around, a lot of you guys will do this and cut. You see that? There's a difference between cutting it across and making a big circle, okay? 
But the sweep step, I thought, you know what? When I, when I started to do this drill, I was like, this is going to be the easiest thing to teach people. And I realized it was a lot harder for people to do. Okay? So keep it wide. You make a big circle. Now, here's going to be important. What did we talk about in pillar one? Setting up the orbit. Setting up separation. Say, go ahead. <clears throat> so watch her. Okay. We're going to go and talk about this in pillar four in a second. She completely killed her orbit, which is going to kill her throw. All right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, do it again. So here's what she did. She did this. Okay, guys, this is what I'm going to make sure you guys don't do. She came here. It wasn't bad. And her discus came down here. Now the rest of your delivery's toast. She's got to get the discus up here so she can turn around the discus. Does that make sense? So she's got, a, she's got an inverted orbit. I did a YouTube video on this. Top five mistakes I saw in 2019. This was one of them. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, so she's got to get that orbit up. All right, so listen. Here's the thing. Are you going to remember all these drills? No. That's why we have a program for people who want to actually dive in and continue to learn it all. Okay. So you guys, though, are going to remember this general sequence, right? That's what we're going to have you guys doing. So you're going to feel this always wide, and you're going to feel that. Now, here's the next little piece. We're going to go a 3-4 connection. Then we're going to go pillar 4. Then we're going to put it all together. Then we're going to go apply it. Got it? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Everybody watch me. We're going to do this. <laughs> 